Hey guys, welcome back to Laced Up Podcast. We got a super good episode coming at you this week. Um, we got Hunter Reynolds from Utah State. He's uh, been there for a year, played at Michigan. He's got a pretty cool story, so he's going to have a lot of good things to share with us. Um, give us a little intro on yourself, Hunter. Uh, where do I start? You know, so I just got done with my second season at Utah State. That was uh, my last year of eligibility, so now I've been training for the uh, training for, you know, NFL draft, uh, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, you know, like Crew said, was at Michigan before that. Graduated, played four years there. And, uh, yeah, now I'm kind of out here just going through life. Little couple, couple like days before pro day, you know, a couple little preparations, last minute things. Uh, kind of ironing out the details. Like at this point, I kind of equate it to like a walkthrough. Yeah. Where, you know, it's sense. not like, it's not like I'm working on stuff anymore. Like, I already know my technique. I already know I'm supposed to do everything. Now it's just like, all right, you know, get out there, warm your body up, go through the last few reps, make sure your, uh, you know, make sure your muscle memory is still there, and then yeah, you know, get ready to run. Yeah, if you're trying to make up some ground right now, you're <laughs> you're, <laughs> yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah, it's like you know, you wouldn't say you're playing a game. You know, you're game planning. You're not gonna try and put the install in. You know, right Friday before the game. Yeah, if, doing if, that early in the week. If you don't got it figured out by now, you're in trouble. You're, yeah. you're done for. Yeah. So might as well just tell them like, yeah, I pulled my hammy in training a couple weeks ago. That's right. <laughs> we ain't doing a pro day. Um, so originally from Jersey. Yep. Went to Michigan. Um, well, actually, first, what was your, what's your family life like? You do you tie it within your family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, mom, dad. I'm the oldest of uh three brothers. So it was four of us. And everyone always is like, yo, how did your mom, how did your mom survive? <laughs> and it's like, I don't know. You know, she's, I feel like it kind of, like she, like, you know, kind of womanly qualities that a lot of people say. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying she's not woman, like, obviously, but she's like, she's very tough. She's very, uh, you know, she cracks jokes all the time uh, with us, on us. So I feel like everyone says it's tough on her. I feel like it was almost easier on her because yeah. she just kind of let us be, you know, all right, go play sports, go get out the house. Yeah. You don't got to worry about us too much. Did you say you were the oldest? Yeah, the oldest, yep. Uh, what's, like, the age gap? You got a brother that's close to you? Yeah, so one is 21, one is 20, and the youngest is 16. Okay, so there's not too bad of a spread. Nah, it was uh, eight years between me and the youngest. How old are you? 24. Okay, I couldn't do the quick math. That's what I asked. <laughs> um, that's good. So that probably helped you a lot with some other questions I wanted to ask you, but... um. Originally, you had to walk on at Michigan, right? Yeah, correct. How did that happen? Because you, I mean, you went to a prep school in high school, right? Yep, yep. So what was like, how do you get from a prep school in Jersey to a walk on at Michigan? Like, what walks so, through that? Uh, originally, actually, out of, so I went to Don Bosco Prep in Jersey, big powerhouse, uh, will probably be 99% of people's schools that are watching this. <laughs> uh, if you went to Bishop Gorman, Matter Day, or... I don't even know if any of the schools in Texas could mess with us. But, um, yeah, those two schools, you got us. Other than that, now we're beating them. But uh, so I went there for went there four years. Uh, I was always, like, really young for my grade. Like, I started school early. So I was 16 at the start of my senior year. What? Yeah, like, I was really young. And That's crazy. Yeah, so I was, I was almost, like, two years behind a lot of the people I was playing with. So, uh, you know, I kind of hit my growth spurt, not even late, but – late compared to everyone else who's right. I was like, you know, in, in my same class. So I hadn't really played to my senior year, senior year did well, got a, you know, some interest from like some FCS schools, but uh, it was like, you know, if you have one good year, especially your senior year, like they already moved on to the next class. Right. So I decided from there to uh, go to prep school. So I went to prep school in uh, Connecticut and we actually, one of the receivers who was committed to Michigan in the class of 2017 we played them the first game of the year, and I did really well. Like, uh, you know, I was the best player on the field. Had a kickoff return for a touchdown, a couple pass breakups, interception. And Michigan staff, they, uh, like, they saw the film, and they started talking to me, and they were like, yeah, you know, we think uh, we don't really have spots open for to offer you a scholarship right now, but, you know, we think you're a guy who, if you come in as a preferred walk-on, you can earn a scholarship here uh, eventually, and that's kind of – you know, I heard that and was like, you know, I've been on the field with guys who go to all these big schools and I've competed with them, was just as good, better than them. So in my head, I was like, you know what, let me just bet on myself and go to Michigan and, you know, make it happen. Yeah. And you were at Michigan for how many years? Four years. Four years. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
so like the what did your mindset have to be because I would imagine it wasn't all like it had to, had to have been tough at times trying mm-hmm. to get on at Michigan yeah. what was that like uh so you know when you're kind of first coming in you're real like you know they're you see yourself as okay they're walk-ons they're scholarship guys but at the end of the day you know if your goal is to play then you used to say okay everyone's you know just a football player on Michigan's team uh but it also kind of adds a chip to your shoulders. So like workouts, you know, I was mm-hmm. never, ever missed a run in my life. Uh, you know, in the weight room, always, you know, made super big effort to, you know, just make sure I am keep making strides there, keep, you know, pushing myself, never take like, never get lackadaisical, you know, never say right. like, okay, you know, he's not doing, this guy that's on scholarship, you know, he couldn't do it, so it's fine if I don't do it. It's like, no, like, right. I, I'm trying to be where he is. Like, I need to, you know, make sure if he can't do, you know, 10 pull-ups, I have to make sure I can do 10 pull-ups. If he can't bench 225, I have to make sure I can bench 225. So just kind of that, like, mindset of, you know, got to always be hungry, got to always have a chip on your shoulder. I think that's what really helped me early on. And then, like, going from high school to college is it's going to be difficult no matter who you are. But um, especially, you know, Michigan, I remember my first practice, I'm going, to, like, we're doing one-on-ones. <laughs> I ended up going against, like, you know, some of the starting receivers. And, you know, they – caught the ball, you know, it was kind of out of position. And at first you get a little discouraged. It's like, am I, like, you start questioning, am I actually good enough? Right, And then, you know, day, like, two, three comes, you're just tired, body's beat down. Yeah. You know, (laughs) the playbook's getting thrown at you. You can't remember what to do when this happens. The offense starts adding in motions. Yeah. So you're just completely lost. And, you know, the coaches are yelling at you. So you're, like, really, you know, getting down on yourself. And then, you know – a couple of days later, you make a play. Right. Like, you make a play in a team period. The whole – everyone's watching, you know. Mm-hmm. Coaches start, like, that's a good job, you know, pointed out in film. And I think from there, you know, you just start to build confidence. It's like, okay, you know, I do it once, I can do it again. So then you just kind of keep building, building, stacking, like, stacking days. And eventually, you know, you get to a point where it's like, all right, you know, I can I can play with these guys. Yeah. And how long did it take you to get on the field uh, from your walk-on first year? Uh, so my first year didn't play redshirted, <laughs> but this is in uh, so this is 2017 before the uh, four game redshirt rule. Okay. So I think it's because we it's we kind of had some injuries going down the stretch. So I remember like I traveled to the Wisconsin game that year as like kind of an emergency like corner emergency special teams guy. Yeah. So I mean back then you know if I play lose the redshirt, but right. nowadays I think you know I would have played in that game because. I would have, you know, they would have been like, okay, we can play him in one game, you know, not wear everyone else down, and he still has a, uh, you know, still keeps his red shirt. Right. So, didn't play then. 2018, had a really good spring, had a good camp, and uh, ended up getting, playing in my first game against Nebraska, Mm -hmm. uh, 2018. And then I played in the Rutgers game that year also. But I, like, I traveled to every game. Yeah. I was kind of a – I was, like, the ma- one of the main backups on, like, every special teams unit. Yeah. It just so happened that that year, like, no one really went down. So, like, I could go in. Yeah. But, you know, I traveled to every game was, uh, you know, I was at the bottom of the depth chart, but I was, like, on the, you know, defensive depth chart. Uh, and then 2019, that's when I became, like, you know, a regular, con- regular contributor on special teams, was starting on a couple of them. Uh, yeah, and then 2020, that's when it was – really like okay this is like my first opportunity to play so yeah the uh you know it was the whole COVID thing so there were a lot of things that happened before the season that uh you know kind of I didn't even know if we we're gonna have one and then right. we ended up playing first game against Minnesota uh who was it Dax he go he went down with an injury early in the game so I, they brought me in on the uh like nickel packages yeah so I came in probably played like you know 10 or so snaps that game and then uh, didn't really play as much next couple of games. Uh, then what happened? What was it? Then the Rutgers game. Uh, Brad, one of our starting safeties, he went down with a uh, he went down with an injury. So I pretty much had to play the whole second half. Did well. Uh, the next week he came back, but he got hurt like the second or third play of the game against Penn State. So came in, played that whole game. Actually, still to this day, is the uh, most tackles I've had in the game. Yeah. I had 11 or 12. Oh, wow. But um, it's always like a good and a bad thing when a safety has a lot of tackles, right? It's like, uh, <laughs> de- yeah. I guess depending I mean, we, on. We played close. We played kind of close to the line of scrimmage. Depends uh, on your position, I yeah, guess. Granted, yeah. granted, we lost that game. So, but um, yeah. 
yeah, so that was really the first time I was really playing. Then, uh, then so Brad, his shoulder was, like, still messed up. He was going to be out for a while. So it was looking like I was going to start the uh, next game against Maryland. And then we had a COVID outbreak. Whole rest of the season got uh, canceled. Yeah. yeah, so. that's Yeah, that was a mess that whole it. year. Yeah, it was, it was bad. Um, So how important was special teams for you? And in mm-hmm. let me ask, let me rephrase that question. How much of a contribute what contributor was your special teams roles to getting you on the field later? Yeah, no, it was huge. Uh, so really, if your coaches see that you're playing, if you're playing on special teams, you know, you're like, all right, you're running, you know, you're tackling, you're blocking, whatever you're doing, there are skills that are translatable to your position, like on offense or defense. So, you know, you're a DB and, you know, you're running down the alley on a kickoff return and you make a tackle or on a kickoff and you make a tackle. Like you're showing your coaches, all right, you know, in the open field, he's someone who can make a tackle, get guys on the ground. Mm-hmm. So that like that part of it, you know, shows them, OK, you know, he has skills that are applicable to defense. But then also, like especially in college, you can only travel so many people to away right. games, especially like in conference games. So. Say you're, you know, a safety and you don't play any, you're on any special teams, depth charts, you know, you're not a starter. Like, you're really just bank, the coaches are really just banking on the starters going down and getting hurt for you to, like, right. make any contribution to the team. Whereas if you're a safety, you know, a backup safety and you're playing on three special teams, you have to travel. So mm-hmm. the fact that you have to travel because of special teams, that means that, okay, well, since we can only bring so many people, we're just going to give him the reps in practice so that way, you know, if something goes down, someone who's already going to be there, they're able to go in the game. So that's kind of, yeah, you know, just have them having to manage it like that. That's really probably the most important part in terms of getting in the field and how special teams can help that. That makes sense. I think that a lot of people overlook that mm-hmm. aspect. Special team, no one wants to play special teams, but <laughs> hey, you have to. If any NFL scout sees this, I want to play special teams. <laughs> there you go. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, even last year I wanted to play special teams, but the coaches told me I was just playing too many uh, too many snaps on defense. Yeah. And really come out the game. So they were like, yeah, you know, we, we need you on defense. So right. we can have other guys play special teams. But, no, nah, I mean, I, I enjoy it. I think it's a real underrated part of the game, too. I've seen a lot of games, uh, you know, kind of change and be determined by oh, special yeah. teams. So, I'm like – Personally, one of my, like, worst, least favorite feelings is when, like, the offense is on the field and there's nothing I can do to, you know, control the game. Right. Whereas on defense, you know, it's like, okay, I control, can help control the game here. Obviously, you know, at safety, yeah. you can only do so much. Any position, you can only do so much. Right. But um, I'm like, okay, you know, I can I can make an impact. Mm-hmm. Special teams, I feel the same way. It's like if I'm on the field, it's like, okay, you know, I can make an impact here and, you know, help us win the game. Yeah, I like that. I guess it's a – I need to – shift my mind because i i'm always begging to get on special teams mm. even though it's one of those things inside i would love to just be you know the dude that just plays all defensive snaps and then just yeah. comes out but right now i'm not that guy so i need to get my special mm. team snaps but uh oh what was uh what was it like playing at the at michigan's with a big house that was yeah. it, uh, it was cool it's like you know you look up and you just see nothing but like people and it's what's crazy is it's not really a tall stadium it's more like the like kind of fans out though. yeah yeah kind of like the uh the rose bowl i've yeah. never been there but that's what people say so um yeah you know you kind of see a bunch of people and it's kind of hard to put in perspective how many people 110,000 really is it's crazy yeah like you like you can't really think about it in your head but um now playing in front of 110,000 people is definitely you know experience like you know, you're only going to get so many times. Uh, looking back on it, you know, you definitely cherish it. It's like, wow, it was like, that was really cool. Really right. Cool part of my life. What was your favorite, or maybe not favorite, what was the craziest place you ever played? Uh, Definitely Penn State, the uh, 2019 game. Yeah. I don't know if you saw the, uh, there's a clip. Is it the clip that go, you always yeah. see where they yeah, couldn't even snap the ball? Yeah, it's that clip. We didn't get the snap off to start the game. Yeah. Like, when I, like you know how when you're in your car, and it's just loud, and like you get out, and your ears are kind of ringing. Yeah, that's how that's how it felt like when we got on the plane going back. Like you couldn't hear anything in the stadium. Uh, you couldn't talk to the person next to you on the bench. And what's funny is that clip where you know the first clip of the game. Yeah, that was not even close to the loudest they got. Really? Yeah. So they they had uh, opened the second half. They returned a kickoff for a touchdown. It got called back. But no one knew it got called back for like five minutes. Yeah. Because the crowd was so loud that like you couldn't hear the officials whistle. Like. No one could wow. really, like, you couldn't, like, the stadium was literally shaking. Like, you couldn't, 
That's crazy. You don't even think about anything. How many does uh, Penn State hold? I would say it's like 108, 109. Oh, it's right there. Yeah, it's, it's pretty close. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah, no, it's... So uh, kind of going back to what we were talking about, you had your experience at Michigan, right? Uh, what ultimately – it was a you, – you grad transferred, right? Yeah, grad transferred. Yeah. Okay. Um, what led to that decision? Uh, so we brought in a new defensive staff going into the 2021 season. So I was, like, set to do spring ball and everything. Yeah. And then uh, after the first practice, I tested positive for COVID. Mm -hmm. So I missed, you know, missed basically all the spring ball. Yeah. And we already had our two starting safeties from the year before coming back. And there was, like, the new defensive scheme. It was going to use a lot more three safety looks. Yeah. But after, you know, missing all the spring ball, I was like, all right, you know, even the role I was going to play here is probably going to be smaller than the role I felt that. I could be able to play yeah. somewhere. So it was kind of like, all right, I can stay at Michigan, you know, be real comfortable, be, you know, real familiar with everything and, you know, be like a core special teams contributor, you know, play like, you know, a role on defense, but, you know, not a starting role. Or I could go somewhere else in the country that, you know, needs a safety and make a just a bigger impact. So that's kind of, yeah, like that was really the mindset of, all right, yeah, I'm, so you just hit the portal. the portal. Yep. Uh, was that the first year of the portal or the second year of the portal? No, I think the didn't the portal open in like 2019. I'm tripping. I could. Yeah, you probably. I don't, I don't really remember. I just know that like there was a. I want to say it was it was kind of earlier in my time in college. Where oh, it was, like, it was right before COVID. I think is when it opened. Yeah, so yeah it would have been 2019. That sounds right. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um, how did you get to Utah State? Uh, well, I was in the portal and. I think I know like uh, like initially in the portal you're gonna get a bunch of coaches like following you on Instagram or following you on Twitter, uh, DMing you, you know, and like they're gonna be talking to you or whatever. And then I don't know, maybe it's different for other people, but for me especially, like you know, I had film, but I wasn't like a starter, so there was still a little bit of like a oh, all right, you know, we we're taking a little bit of a chance on you. Mm -hmm. So there were some schools like you know. P5 schools, Big Ten, Big 12, uh, ACC schools that were like, yeah, you know, we really like your film. We're going to, uh, you know, we want to, like, wait till we get done with spring ball to really see kind of what we have, and then we'll let you know. Yeah. And I was like, I don't really want to wait that long because, right. you know, you see all the articles, all the stories of people getting stuck in the portal. <clears throat> yeah. And I was like, I, like, I don't want to just be stuck somewhere. Like, you know, yeah. I don't want to be stuck not playing anywhere without a home. So – I remember James Madison called or James Madison. They were talking to me heavy. Mm -hmm. And uh, then like two days after they first hit me up, Utah State hits me up. It was uh, Coach Morris, actually. Oh, was he, it? Yeah, <laughs> he, DM, he DM me. He was like, uh, he was like, yo, do you have like some film? Do you have film or whatever? I sent him my film. He was like, OK, yeah, no, nah, we really like it. I'm going to uh, give you our defensive coordinator's number. He's also our safety's coach. Uh, so Coach Bonda, yeah. you know, he gave me a call. He was like. Hey, you were like a walk. You were walking to Michigan, right? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, so you've never uh, like ever gotten a scholarship offer in your life? I was like, no. He was like, well, let me be the first person to uh, give you a scholarship. That's dope. Yeah. So it was a uh, it was a really good feeling just knowing that you know someone actually believed in me, right? And then um, <clears throat> so then you know I kind of sat with the offer for probably like three or four days. Uh, I was talking to some other schools along the way too. But a lot of them were like, yeah, we're going to wait till after spring ball is over. And like I said before, you know, I just wasn't really going for that. And I was like, Utah State's in the Mountain West. Mountain West is a conference, you know, I've heard about. I know it's produced plenty of, like, you know, plenty of talented players. Right. So, like, I'm perfectly fine going there. Just, mm -hmm. all right, let me, you know, let me bet on myself. Go somewhere that believes in me and make the most of it. Right. How did how do you think being a walk-on helped you, like, mentally? Like, cause you, it was just you. No one, like, I don't want to say no one believed in you, but you. Mm. But at the end of the day, that's really how it is. Yeah. Right? It's like you're, you're the one that believes in yourself the way that you do. If mm. that makes sense. Yeah. Um. I think, especially being a walk on, they're kind of like things that just get ingrained in you. Like, I feel like you know, early in high school, that's when you kind of develop certain like you know, certain like traits, certain intangible yeah. traits, and then early in college, you develop like you know. You keep developing those same traits. Yeah. But I think those traits are pretty, like, uh, they're pretty developed in you once you get to, like, you know, your third year in college. Right. So, 
you know, being a walk on, you don't have the extra, like you don't have extra leeway. Yeah, I feel like that. Uh, you know, someone on scholarship, someone that's like a five star would have. So you always have in your head, like, all right, you know, I have to like be almost perfect to, you know, can't have any off the field stuff uh, on the field. You know, have to like be super in tune to the playbook. Have to be, you know, coming in, you know, the top five in conditioning. Can't right. like you can't be in the back and stuff like that. So I think stuff like that is just it's always like, all right, this is always in my head. Like you know, no matter how I'm feeling, I like even at Utah State, you know, when I was coming back and played, you know, the whole played whole twenty one twenty twenty one season was a starter. You know, one of the captains of twenty twenty two team. There was never a time when I was like, all right, you know, I could just miss a, like miss a, a workout or be late to a workout or right you know, miss a uh, miss a time in conditioning or not be like super locked in the film study or the playbook. Like, it was always one of those things that just, you know, I'm always be locked in just because, you know, I know that there was a point in time where if I wasn't locked in, then, you know, I probably would have been off the team or not playing. So, that's kind of always stuck with me. So, it became part of, like, what you do and who you are. Yeah. yeah. That's dope. What what advice would you say to people who are walking on? Uh, I would say don't get too – what's funny is I always get asked this question whenever I do, like, a – Instagram questions. Yeah, I feel like I, can, <laughs> I, I feel like I can never remember what I said the last time. So I probably said at least like eight different things for the most important thing. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give a couple just so that way I don't like leave anything out. But I think one of them is don't like if your goal is to actually play, you can't be like intimidated. Mm-hmm. Like you can't be walking in like, oh my god, these guys are like four or five stars. Yeah, and you know I didn't have any stars coming out of high school. You have to look at it just like. All right, you know, I know I'm a talented football player. These are talented football players. Like, let's let's get after it. Let's get to it. Uh, so that's one. Another one is, like you said, like we were talking about before about special teams. That's the quickest way, you know, you're gonna yeah. get to the field. Like I've seen, especially after the uh, four game retro rule, like, right? There were like especially. there were true freshman walk ons who, you know, played played in games at Michigan on special teams just because of the fact that you know they showed. Uh, like they showed they were super locked in in like the meeting, super locked in, uh, in like the drill work, knew a bunch of different responsibilities that, that too. So if you like say you're, uh, you know, you're kind of the contained guy on kickoff return. Yeah. You also need to be like the safety. You have to know what the alley players are doing. Like just know as many roles as possible. So that way, instead of, you know, like going back to what we said before too, I think I've said that a lot, but um, <laughs> going back to what we said before, how playing on special teams helps you like helps the team because or helps you because now the defense is like okay this guy's contributing so if you contribute on multiple special teams or multiple even like positions on a special teams yeah it's like okay we can either bring this guy who backs up receiver and backs up like gunner on special teams or it's like okay we can bring this guy who is a backup corner but is also a backup gunner but can also be a backup wing can also be a backup like you know tackle if he need if we need him to be there, just being able to like do multiple different things, and then the last one is just always like kind of keeping the back of your head that like you have this chip on your shoulder. Like even if you know you earn a scholarship and earn playing time, you know you're starting in the back of your head. Like it's always got to be a thing of like, yo, I was this hungry kid once, and there's probably some kid coming in the next class who's in the same position I am, who's gonna be just as hungry. So if you know I yeah. take a day off. If I take, you know, some reps off, like, someone's going to be coming to, you know, take my spot. So, you can't, like, you just got to think, like, okay, you know, everything I did to get here, someone else is doing the same exact thing. So, you have to, you know, keep, it's like a constant battle of, you know, trying to catch the people ahead of you, but also keep distance from the people behind you. That's cool. That's a lot of good advice, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you had a lot of good ones. You've, you've answered that question on Instagram okay. so many times. It a lot. That's funny. Uh, a little transition. What are you most excited for going into pro day? Uh, The 40. Yeah, yeah. I think. What What do you think you're gonna run, or what are you shooting for? We're, we're gonna keep that a secret, but okay. Well, I'll I'll tell the crew off camera, but um, <laughs> like it, it. it'll be way faster. It'll be way faster than. Uh, actually, wait. When does this drop? When does this drop? Yeah. After, so not it won't be this week, but the next week. Oh, all right. Yeah, no. Four, four, five is the goal. That four, four, five. Yeah. That's a good goal. Yeah. I think. What are your? Uh, I have mixed emotions about people that run sub four four. I have a theory on it. That's I think. I think people that run sub four four, mm-hmm. like. I think it's overrated. I think it's almost a disadvantage to be that fast because I think it puts them out of position. Wait, take your phone out and take your phone out and 
Go to the stopwatch. Stop it and start it as fast as you can. Stop it and start as fast as I can? Yeah. Or start it and stop it as fast as you can. All right. Let's see. 0.16? Exactly. So that's the difference between a four that's the difference between a four three and a four four six or a four five or a four four and a four five six. That like that little time right there. So while like, you know, the forty is such a thing where it's like it's become a thing where it's like, all right, you know, this is a huge measuring stick. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like either you can play football or you can't. And point one six is not gonna, you know, yeah. it, it means something, but it there are bigger things, you know, that contribute to that time right there way more than just, you know, starting in a three point stance and running in a straight line. Right. You so. know you know what I think the most the most interesting thing about the combine and the draft and all that is or uh. in the pro days is that people change the way they work out mm-hmm. for a pro day. It's like, wait, wait, aren't we playing football? So why do I have to change the way I work out to prepare for this test that's supposed to show how good a football player you are? Yeah, no, I mean. It makes zero sense. Even like the training, you know, I just got, so I was in Florida, the training I just got done doing. Yeah. It was mostly like, it was basically like track workouts. Right. Like track stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, we still did like position drills every, like, you know, in between. Right. You but for the most part, you know, you're training to run track. Right. And, you're training like all eight weeks to run two four and a half second runs. Right. So, it's so I mean, it's so interesting. As someone, as someone who, you know, quote unquote, before I was quote unquote slow, uh, like going through the whole process, it was like, all right, you know, it's like I've always known I could play football. You turn the film on, you know, obviously I can play football, but this is like all right, this is what the world is nowadays. So, you know, I could, you could complain about it and be like, why are we doing this? Or it's like, all right, you know, it's what's important. So we're going to go down here, you know, knock it out. Yeah. Get a good, get, you know, get ourselves in a position to run a good time. And it is what it is. But I mean, at the end of the day, like, I feel like the 40, it kind of is the glitz and glamour, but you know, your tape, that's, that's like the meat potatoes. That's what's, you know, getting you, that's what's getting you in the door. And that's ultimately once you get in the door, that's what's keeping you in the door. You know, right. there are a lot of guys who ran four twos who, you know, wash out the league. There are a lot of guys who run four sixes who, you know, play for play for 10 years. So, right. It's all about if you can play football or not. Oh, man, that's so true. I, at the end, of, that's what I always say. It's like, <laughs> man, at the end of the day, you're either a football player or you aren't. Yeah. Ball or get balled on, right? That's the quote. <laughs> <laughs> Straight like that. Um, a little bit of a transition again. Um, you do a lot of social media stuff. When did you get started on that? So it was during the middle of the pandemic. Like everything was shut down, all the gyms and everything. And my so my one of my brothers was still in high school at the time, mm-hmm. and he was playing football. And his uh, like his teammates, they weren't really sure like what they should be doing to like yeah. work out at home. So I just like uploaded a video of all right, these are like you know some of the at home workouts I'm doing. You know, just, and it was, like, a lot of, like, kind of MacGyvering stuff, like, you know, putting books in a book bag, uh, filling up, like, you know, a bucket with water and yeah. stuff like that. You know, just kind of makeshift ways to, you know, get some type of resistance. Yeah. And then I just uploaded one of the videos, took off, got, like, a million views in probably three days. Really? Uh, yeah, got, like, I got, like, 10,000 followers pretty quick, like, probably within within like four weeks of like consistently posting. Yeah. I was at like 10,000. And then it just kind of, you know, kind of went from there. Yeah. Kind of went from there, you know, just took off. Was it. So when you started initially, was your plan, you wanted to grow your social media following or was it strictly just like, I'm just posting a video for the boys. Yeah. It was, it was really just like, so I'd say probably pre 10,000. It was, all right, I'm going to just like, you know, yeah, I'm just posting the post. I'm bored, you know. Mm-hmm. Don't have anything else to do. Like, it doesn't take that long to like make these videos, edit them. Uh, it's not like I'm doing anything outside of my current life. You know, I'm <laughs> doing what exactly what I'm doing. It's yeah. just now I'm filming it as opposed to not filming it. Right. So, um, yeah. So I was just posting the post. Then I hit ten thousand. And so one thing about me too, I watch like a lot of YouTube. Yeah. So you know, I you always like see YouTubers like you know. Yeah, and they have ads on their videos. Yeah. And then some of the YouTubes I watch, they talk about, you know, how they earn, like, their revenue and all that stuff. So you're watching it. It's like, oh, like, these people are making a legitimate life off of this. So that's when it kind of became, like, you know, oh, this is since this is also pre-NIL, it was like, you know, when I'm done playing college football, 
Yeah. Like, all right, you know, this is, well, we'll have some, some here. So I wasn't even thinking about it in terms of the money at that point. I wasn't thinking about it in terms of, you know, getting famous immediately. It was I didn't like, think about that part because you couldn't even make money if you wanted to when you started. No. So it was like, That's all right, crazy. it was like, all right, you know, let's, uh, let's just have, you know, keep building something for whenever we're done in college. Yeah. And I mean, at that time, you know, there was like, we, didn't, I didn't know I was going to get a COVID year. Right. I know that I would like be transferring. So it was kind of like, you know, I'll have two more seasons at Michigan, get done with those. And then, you know, we got to, got to move on. Right. But, uh, so yeah, then I hit 10,000. That's when it kind of shifted. It was like, all right, let's, let's start, you know, posting consistently. Let's start looking up like tips and tricks on how to, you know, grow your following, how to boost engagement. Yeah. Let's, you know, just take it more seriously. So Mm -hmm. kind of from there on out, it's, um, it's like, all right, you know, it's, I kind of look at it as like a a side job, a side hustle. For sure. That's kind of me. When did you get to the point where you started making money on it? Uh, so 2021, that's when NIO was first a thing. So I want to say I was at like 70,000 on TikTok, maybe like 5,000 on Instagram. Yeah. So, uh, damn, only 5,000? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. You're like, what, 50 now? Yeah, 40 or 49.1. There right you on. Go. 50. We'll call it 50. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. 50. 50 is like, all right, once I hit 50. Right, okay. So right. we need to get you to 50 now. I have to get to 50. That's the goal. All right. But, um, yeah, no, so 2021 comes, first couple months. I had some, like, people reach out to me, but it was mostly like, all right, we're going to give you, like, this free stuff. Right. But um, I've always known in my head, like, all right, whatever free stuff you're giving, it probably costs you, like, you know, $10 in total to make. Right. <laughs> and so whatever you sell it for, like, that's, you know, your upcharge, that's how you get the profit. But it costs you $10 to make. So, you know, like, underwear – I'm not going to name any brand names, but the underwear company that, you know, you see a lot of people repost. Yeah. It, it probably cost them absolutely nothing to, right. or it cost, it cost them significantly less to send this stuff than the like repost on their story is actually worth. Right. So that was kind of always my thing. Like I don't really want free stuff. Like, all right, free stuff's cool. I'll take it, but right. I'm not really going to like, you know, be promoting it. Like, you know, you guys are doing me some huge favor. Right. But, um, yeah, so then kind of goes by. Then uh, I signed with, uh, signed with my manager. And from there, that's when the deal started started kind of, like, rolling in and the money started being made. So having a manager helped a lot. Yeah, it helped a lot because, like, especially someone who's, like, that's what they do. Right. They have those connections. Uh, they're working with other people who, you know, brands are reaching out to about and – like the, some of the other people he manages also kind of do similar stuff as me, like in the football world. Gotcha. And even in the like basketball world too, you know, the worlds kind of, kind of coexist together. But um, yeah. So like there'll be times when a brand goes to him about or him about like one of them. And then, you know, my name gets thrown in the conversation. Now I'm the one doing the deal because, you know, it's a better fit for who I am as a person, what I post. Yeah. And yeah. So just having a manager, I feel like that's what really, that's really when like, you know, I saw the change of, okay, you know, this went from being, all right, I can get some free some free apparel and stuff like that to, right. all right, like, I can I can earn money off this. That's cool. I didn't think about that part. What's, uh, do you have a favorite content to make or post? Um, I would say Dripper Skip. That's that a was, classic. Yeah, that was such a, that's, that's a good one, you know, it's always like, I don't like, <laughs> I don't like relying on it because I feel like it waters it down. I feel like it's so much better when it's like a, all right, you know, no one knows when it's coming. No one knows who's really going to be on it. Right. I just kind of, like, drop it and, like, drop 10 people. I feel like that just makes it, like, so much more. All right, when it Keep, does. When keeps it, you wanting more. Yeah, like, when it does yeah, drop, yeah, yeah. people are like, I want it. Because I've seen other people do it, and they, like, do it every single day. Right. And it's like, all right, like, now, you know, everyone knows when it's coming. When it, Like, I don't know. It's just not how I want to, how I want to do it. Yeah. So, I like Dripper Skip. Uh, I like a lot of the. Like skits I do, yeah. Like some of the, uh, like on the field ones, like you know the types of people doing yeah, up downs, the uh, types different of people, people doing conditioning. conditioning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like making those just because those are funny. Those are all like those are all lived experiences, right? Like you, I mean, you remember the uh, the gassers, the yeah. two, three, fours, the fifties. <laughs> like those are all things that like happened at one point or another. Yeah. While we were doing those. So it's like, all right, you know, like, it's not like, you know, I'm coming up with anything crazy. I'm right. And it's, it's relatable and funny. too. Yeah. Like in every, like, I feel like every school goes through the same thing in conditioning. Like yeah. the stuff we go through here, people, you know, passing out, throwing up. 
Yeah. Like being tired. Same things happened at Michigan. Same things happened in high school. Same right. things are probably happening, you know, BYU, Bama, right. uh, USC, like every school. So. There's always, because there's always that guy who's the puker. There's always that guy yeah. who's all, can never finish on time. <laughs> like there's just, yeah. Yeah, I just feel like it's super relate, like super relatable content that, you know, it's funny. I feel like that's that's kind of what I like making. Yeah, that is funny. You do a good job of it too. What uh, Was it hard for you to get, like, because obviously there's a stigma behind being, mm. behind being whatever a uh, content creator, influencer, TikTok, yep. whatever you want to call it, right? There's a stigma behind that. Was it hard for you to, like, be like, okay, I'm going to, you know, screw what everybody thinks. I'm just going to do me. And, I mean, obviously at the end of the day it worked out for you. But yeah. did you have to battle with that mentally at all? Uh, I think at first I did because especially coming from – because, like, when I first started, I was still at Michigan. Yeah. So, like, I hadn't really played a lot. Mm-hmm. So, a lot of the comments were like, oh, you know, you're doing this. You should be focused on, like, focus on, you know, getting some stats, focus on playing. Right. Uh, uh. And then, you know, I never really thought anything of it. But it was just one of those things where it's like, all right, I'm not going to, like, respond to, you know, blatant negativity. Just, you know, you're – like, you couldn't be at a Division One school if you wanted – people commenting yeah. couldn't be at a Division One <laughs> school if they wanted to. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to pay it any mind. Yeah. But then – you know, once I got to Utah State and started, like, you know, really, really playing and playing well, it was like, all right, you know, like, what what are people, like, what are people really have to say now? So now, right. you know, you look at the comment section, it's a lot less like, oh, like, play this, do that. And even, even like, in the off season, you still get a lot of, like, oh, like, you know, you should worry about, you know, football, stop making, like, TikToks or whatever. Yeah. But the way I look at it is, <clears throat> so it takes me about 10 minutes in total at the most to make most of my videos. Yeah. So in those 10 minutes, you know, take that away. There's 23 hours and 50 minutes left in the day. Right. I don't really play video games anymore. Uh, you know, I'm really just chilling and like chilling in, you know, my room most of the time. Right. So it's like if someone were playing video games in this time, you wouldn't think anything of it. If someone was watching TV in this time, you wouldn't think anything of it. Right. If someone was, you know, out partying and drinking, like you what is like it's it's normal, you know. Right. It's like, all right. That's stuff that people have been doing forever. So mm-hmm. you wouldn't really think any, anything of it. But social media is so new that I think people kind of fear what they're, you know, not used to. Right. So there's like, like you said, the stigma behind it of, oh, all right, he's doing social media. He's not locked in. Whereas I'm like, this is kind of like, like I said, a second job. So yeah. this is what I like am doing instead of, you know, <laughs> watching TV, playing video games, drinking, smoking. So to me, there's no like, there's no drop off in my play because of it. And I mean, right. also too, there like, there are things I like don't do with it. Like I've never made one on uh post on social media, like made a post on a game day. Like yeah. there are times I'll post like, you know, post like a pre-made uh, like kind of hype video right. on like my TikTok or Instagram or on my story. Mm-hmm. But it's never like a, you know, I'm in the bathroom, like dancing before the game. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm never, like I'm You're never doing that, that. Yeah. So it's like, it's not really, to me, it's not a distraction. I think any, I, Personally, I think anything can only be a distraction if you let it be. 100%. Like, I think, yeah. you know, video games could be a distraction if you're up, you know, till 2 in the morning, not watching film, not doing homework, just right. playing video games. Like, that's a distraction. Uh, you know, if you have a girlfriend or wife, yeah. who's, you know, bugging you, who's, 100%, you know, keeping you yeah. up all hours of the day, having you run around, that could be a distraction. So, you know, no matter what you're doing, if you're really locked in to, you know, the main thing, which I do always do. I keep the main thing, the main thing, which is football. Yeah. Like, you know, you don't really have to worry about outside things becoming distractions. And people don't understand how much free time you have. At, oh, like, yeah. Dude. Especially as a grad student. Oh, yeah, because you're taking some BS classes. Like, oh, I'm not going to say BS, but, like, I never had an in-person class at Utah State. I uh, Did you I, ever go on campus? Like, you never went on campus for a class? No. No, I never had Dang. to go into a building to attend a class at Utah State. That's nice. They were all online. So, that's the way to do it. So yeah, so it's like, you know, and it's not even like there were, like, lectures either. Like, they were all, like, pre-recorded and, like, you watch them, like, do them at your own pace. Mm-hmm. So I would, like, wake up, you know, wake up. Oh, well, I mean, you were there, so you know the schedule. Wake yeah. up, go to breakfast, get treatment, go back to my apartment, go uh, leave, you know, go to practice. Right. Meetings, practice, all that, eat dinner, back in my back in my apartment. So it's mm-hmm. like, you know, there's probably a solid, like, four or five hours in the day where I'm like not sleeping right? or doing like, you know, football related stuff where it's like, I just have it free. So yeah. it's all about how you want to spend those four hours really. Right. And uh, I mean, I think a lot of times people think, yeah, I don't know. People undervalue like uh, 
having something to take your mind off football too because yeah. like you're doing it so much and yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes i find it like i feel like i watch a decent amount of film um especially just being in spring like mm. i feel like i watch a lot um but there's times where it's like if you're over consuming it's like now you're overthinking yeah and you have to make sure you have that balance of like okay you need to do something to take your mind off of it for a second so you can like reset and relax and and not be tense about it like that's that's the big thing is like yeah, yeah for me it's like you have to be able to recover you have to be able to relax and like mm-hmm. play football and be a normal human yeah. and not just like tweak out over like you know try like you start trying too hard and you're doing too much and then they just don't play well yeah no i feel you especially because like one of the funniest things is like whenever you see athletes doing something else like you know they post doing something else people are always like oh well like why aren't you like focused on your sport or whatever yeah it's like there's so much time in the day yeah that, you know you're not realistically going to be spending all 24 hours work, like doing whatever, like whatever sport you do, even right. whatever you do in life. Like, you know, you wouldn't go to a mailman and say, why are you not thinking about mail? Right. And, like, you know, <laughs> when he's off, like, you know, at a restaurant with his family. Like, yeah, it's like, it, it's, you know, I like me personally, I'm like, I'm kind of a like big thinker on the field. I like watch a lot of film and stuff like yeah. that. But even after that, you know, there's a lot of time in the day where it's like, all right, you know, I don't need to be thinking about football right now. Like me thinking about it won't be, productive and won't be conducive to me playing better on the field like right at that point it's just kind of like you know dead time where i'm just doing it to say i did it but i'm not really like you know exactly you, like say you watch film for you know three hours you watch like you know i watch like splits i watch formations tendencies all that stuff after that like i'm really just watching like watching a football game like i would on a saturday like i'm not even like yeah. you know i'm taking all the notes i need it's not intentional yeah like there's not any like i'm not really like you know when you read a book and you kind of like read a page and then you realize like i don't I didn't actually consume anything on that page. Yeah. That's how I feel sometimes. So it's like, all right, let me like take a step back, you know, turn on a YouTube video, turn on like Netflix or something, like, you know, take my mind off of it. I already put in like, you know, three hours. So yeah, let me go back, you know, go back, take a, take a little time off and then, you know, come get back at it tomorrow. While we're on the topic of film, uh, where'd you learn how to watch film? Uh, so I had some older vets at, uh, Michigan who, they would help, like, you know, they would just kind of tell me their uh, their film watching habits. Um, actually, so in on YouTube, like, I watch a lot of stuff on there, but, like, I watch a lot of stuff on, like, all right, how to, like, you know, get better at just stuff. Yeah. So I saw a video one time about how, uh, I forgot what player it was. It was an NFL corner. He was talking about how he watches film, breaks film down. Then there was kind of a series, so I ended up watching, a sa- like, how a safety uh, watches film, how a linebacker watches film. And it was kind of from there, it's like, all right, you know, you kind of take everything everyone said and you figure out what works best for you and what helps you, you know, be able to remember stuff on Saturdays. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's kind of your new, that's your new schedule. Mm-hmm. What would you say some of your uh, strengths are as a player? Uh, definitely my intelligence. Like, I don't think every time I'm on the field, I don't think there's a player as smart as me. Because you do a good job of being in the right place at the right time. Yeah, so like I think I a, have noticed that. Like a big part of it is just understanding your playbook, mm-hmm. and a lot of people, I think, they just try and figure out what they're supposed to do. Right. But I want to know like what everyone's doing on the defense. So mm-hmm. when I first got to Utah State, it was like, all right, let me just first learn about like the secondary because that's you know the most immediate thing that uh, I really need to know. So like always knowing what the corners did, always knowing what the other safety did, the other corner did. Yeah, that was like big to me. And then, you know, once I kind of started getting that down, it was like, all right, let me figure out what the linebackers are doing. Let me figure out the defensive line stunts. And understanding those helps just put you in such a better position because, like, at safety, you know, you know, there's certain gaps that are going to be open. You know that in certain coverages, certain areas are going to be weaknesses. So it just helps you, like, not get drawn into someone else's responsibility. But it also helps you know, like, okay, you know, we're weak in the middle of the field right here. Let me be a little more conscious of, all right, let me, you know, protect the middle of the field, notice the quarterback, notice their, ten, like, route tendencies, notice how the quarterback, you know, diagnoses a defense, and, you know, you can kind of read his eyes, and, okay, well, all right, he's kind of looking towards the middle of the field. It's going to look open, but I'm going to be here and be able to make a play because I know that. <clears throat> Dude, you're able to slow the game down so much more Yeah, when you're able to do that. Like, that's yeah. one thing I've learned. Uh, like, when I first got to college, it was like – Okay, they call this. What do I have? And it was like I, oh, I had to like memorize it, mm-hmm. and that just doesn't work for me. I, I'm a visual thinker, yeah. So it's like versus now when a play is called, I'm not thinking like, okay, what's my responsibility? It's like what's the concept we're running, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where's everybody rotating to? Like all that, and it, oh, dude, it, 
night and day difference. Yeah, no, especially like you want to do all your thinking pre-snap. Right. And then like you don't want to be in a position where, you know, you're supposed to be in the deep half and you're having to think like, okay, I have to get to the deep half. It's right. You want to be able to like see the play call. All right, I'm in the deep half. Then, you know, be able to look every like it should it has to happen like, you know, instantaneously. Mm -hmm. So that way you can start looking at the offense like, okay, these guys are gonna be in, you know, these guys are probably gonna run this route concept right here just based off the splits, based on down and distance, right based on part part of the field. Uh so then, you know, once you notice all that, it's like, all right, you're not thinking about all right, get to the cloud. You're right. thinking about, all right, this is probably what's gonna happen right here. Let me, you know, yeah, play my technique accordingly to I always say like um like I'm a aggressive player, mm -hmm. but I'm calculated with it. Right. You know, so there are times where there are times where like I'll do something where it's like, okay, you're like really banking on the fact that you know what you're yeah. doing, <laughs> that you know what's about to happen. But like I'm confident enough in myself and uh Coach Bondo's confident enough in me to like, you know, I can do that. Right. Because I never I was never in a position where it's like, all right, I overdid it. Yeah. So, you know, it was never like I'm supposed to be the middle field safety and I'm at the line of scrimmage, you know. It's always right. like, all right, something happens, like, you know, there's a motion here, motion there. Uh, actually, one of the plays that where that happened was the, uh, I guess, BYU last year. They ran, they ran the little goals. under route. Yeah. And, like, from film study and all that, I knew it was coming. I was trying to signal to the uh, – I was trying to signal to everyone else, like, what was about to happen. Yeah. But I think there was some confusion because we had a couple injuries at the time. You know, guys were in different spots. So – I was like, all right, I know the play's coming. I could be on the passive side right now and, you know, be a little safer. Or it's like I can just go, you know, make the play that I know is about to happen. So yeah. I was like, all right, you know, we're, we're about to make this play. So uh, was that strictly just off of tendencies and was it a formation? Or what, what gave you that key? that they were uh, Formation, play? formation down distance. Mm. Uh, uh, they ran it like three games, three games before that. Uh, they'd always like – and one thing about offenses too, especially if you're a defensive player watching this, is – don't look at, like, how they line up initially. Look at how they line up after the motions, the shifts. It's like the, they came out, you know, in whatever formation, uh, fake, like, you know, uh, hard count, yeah. look back to the sideline. Then that's when everything, like, shifted. So the running back flop sides. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it, there was a motion that happened, like, before that. So then it's like, okay, the final picture, this is what you guys run it. Like, this is your 10 out of 10 times. How you run this play It's the only way you run it. It's about to happen. So yeah, that's when you kind of know, like, okay, this is this is what's coming. That's awesome. How much confidence I give you when you know what they're running before just from your film? Oh no, it's a, it's a great feeling. Plays so much faster. Yeah, and it, it's funny is like offenses think they're so smart. They think you know they have every answer to everything, and then at the end of the day, like every team basically runs the same stuff. It's at so a different true. formation. So once you like start, once you start like getting a general understanding of football, mm -hmm. that's when it's like okay, you know. Now you just apply it to each game, and all right, you can take off, go from there. No, hundred percent. I've been in, uh, I've been in multiple different offenses. I was actually blessed with a lot of good offensive coaches mm. in high school, especially. Um, and then you know, being at Utah State, I was in the offensive room for a little bit too, yep. in the quarterback room, and and uh, it's so true. I mean, everybody's it, it's concepts. Everybody's yep. running the same concepts. They just mm. call them something different. Yep. And uh, what formations they like to run out of? It's it. They're very offensive coordinators are very. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I lost I would her words. Say, I would say, I would say arrogant because they think, yeah. you know, they think they have a play that, like, even when I was down <laughs> in Florida training, the quarterbacks, they would have their, like, meetings. They'd be drawing up plays they love for certain things. Yeah. And they'd be so confident to, like, oh, this can, like, this can hit here. This, this is going to hit here. Yeah. And I'm, like, they're literally, I have, like, literally have plays on film of me making a play against this play because you thought, oh, this is going to be open because, you know, I'm, like, all right, this is the part of the field that thing's going to, you know, be there. It's not like I'm going to make sure it's not there. Dude, that's a good way to put it. Offensive coordinators are arrogant. Yeah, I remember like, what I – they made me play freaking scout team that year at Utah yeah. State. And I'm just like out there playing it the way I'd play it. And they're like, mm. they're not going to play it that way in the game. I'm like, all right. I mean, I just reacted to the play you guys had. And then they run that exact play in the game, throw a pick. And I'm like, the dude did the exact same thing I did. It's yeah. like if that's the natural reaction to the play, it's like – but they always know better, you know. <laughs> that's funny. Um, So – I did have a question about people who it's so like people who see your social media, they see the things that you've been able to do. Uh, do you have advice to people who are wanting to start uh, growing their social media? I know you probably get asked that a lot too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean a little bit, not as much as you think. I think okay. a lot of people just don't like 
they don't really want to post. Like, they were just more of a consumer of it. But um, I think the most important thing is just be yourself. Yeah. Like, if you look at, like, all the, like, I mean, you you know, you've been in, like, you know, on a team with me. Yeah. You've seen, like, me in meeting rooms. You've seen me in, like, you know, training room and all that stuff. My social media is pretty, like, pretty on brand for, like, who I am as a person. So right. people who know me, they're like, okay, you know, this is, like, you know, you know, I argue all the time about stuff. Yeah. <laughs> half, my social, half my social media is me just, like, you know, giving my opinions on things. Right. So, you know, but if I were to try, if I started, like, you know, doing a bunch of dancing stuff, yeah. it's like, yo, like, we've n- I've never seen you dance ever. So yeah. it's like, you know, that's not me. So that's not what I, like, do on social media. Right. I think where people fall into trouble is when they start be- trying to become, like, an online persona as opposed to just themselves. Yeah. That's where it's like, all right, people can kind of sense that. People can kind of tell you're being fake. And when people see you being fake, you know, they're not going to, uh, they're not going to mess with you. Right. And then it also becomes harder to create your content too. Yeah. Cause I mean, if I, like, if I had to think of things every day to do that weren't just based on, you know, my life, what I do, what I enjoy, yeah. like, you know, after a while you're going to get burnt out. So, you know, if you keep it on brand to you, keep it like, you know, relatable to yourself, that's when, you know, you just kind of get free flowing ideas. How did you, uh, I know you said you watched some YouTube. So what are some things you did to grow to help uh, your videos get more viewers? So the biggest thing that, like, the super most simple thing that people don't do is just post. Just consistency? Just posting consistently. That's I've like, heard that. That's really, like, the biggest thing in terms of, all right, this is going to get your growth. Like, remember how I said earlier I was at 5,000 on Instagram in, like, 2021? Yeah. So I started posting just more, just posting reels. Posting, like, you know, or, organic reels, posting uh my tiktoks as reels and the second i started doing that my engagement shot way to, way up like mm-hmm. last so there were a couple of different spikes but like i remember last uh january february mm-hmm. like it that's when like it started becoming like okay like you're consistently posting you know five yeah. to seven reels a week that's when it was like all right your views start shooting up your uh you know your followers start shooting up your engagement starts shooting up so then, you know, kind of went from 5,000, I went from like 5,000 to like 9,000. Then going into, what was it? It was like May, like I had a super blow up. Like, I remember because I went to LA like kind of early ish May. Yeah. Right before I went to LA, I was at 9,000, like 500. Yeah. Got to 10,000 the day before I was going to LA. Got to LA. Then a week later, I go to, uh, went to Phoenix. So I'm in Phoenix and I ended up hitting like 17K oh, in wow. that time frame. Like Ooh. in a week, I hit like seven, that got 7,000 followers. So wow. then, you know, kind of kept that consistency, kept posting, and it just really shot up. Like I went from 17,000 to like 30,000. And then I went from like 30,000 to 40,000 right before the season. I kind of stagnated a little bit in season. Like I just didn't. Right. Like, I didn't have, like, a lot of free-forming ideas. Like, I didn't have any ideas that I really liked mm-hmm. or anything that I felt was going to be really, you know, really organic to me. Yeah. So, I didn't post as much. Uh, and then in January, this January, I started, like, you know, getting back on it, you know, posting yeah. pretty consistently. Uh, so, I went from, like, 40,000 to, like, f- no, it was, like, 44,000 to, like, 49,000. Yeah. So, not, like, now I'm at 49,000. But, like, in the last 30 days, I think, my Instagram says I've reached like 1.6 million accounts. Uh, I've gotten like probably five or 6,000 new followers. So it's really just like, you know, every time I stop posting, that's when it's like, all right, you know, I kind of start falling off. Then I post again, starts blowing up. So I'm just looking at your page here. So does it come in? <clears throat> you kept saying it spikes. So it comes yeah. in spikes. You'll be like, not a lot of followers, slow growth. And then boom, yep. big and I mean, it's pretty random too. Like you never know. Like sometimes I'll post a video like, yo, this is going to get like, this is going viral. Yeah. You know, barely gets any views. Post like <laughs> the most random, like three second video gets like, you know, 6 million views. Yeah. So you can't really look at it in terms of like growth on a day to day basis. You have to kind of look at it more as a big picture thing. Like, okay. All right. You know, my videos are doing well. Well, right now it's good. You know, it's probably going to be, you know, a week from now I'll post. Videos do terrible. Yeah. It's got to, like, you know, understand that's kind of kind of how it goes. You got to be able to, uh, you just got to ride that, the, yeah. the highs and lows. Yep. Dude, you know, it's actually crazy, though, is the, the same concept with that of, like, just being consistent on, like, your posting to grow mm-hmm. your, your following. Like, 
I mean, how true is that with everything else, right? Oh, it's super <clears> true. <throat> like, I mean, you know, say you're working out, you know, you work out once a week, twice a week. Yeah. You know, you're not going to see results. Right. You work out, you know, consistently, you see results. Uh, you know, I'm sure with your wife and all, yeah. you know, if you had, if there was a point in time where, you know, you were super inconsistent with, you know, talking to her, with, you know, being with her, spending time with her, yeah. things would go bad. Right. You, know, you start being more, <laughs> no, you start, 100%, start yeah. being more consistent with that, you know, things, things start going better. So, yeah, really just consistency, like, that's probably the hardest part that, or the s- simplest thing that people struggle with is, I just have to do it. Right. Like, it doesn't matter initially if you're doing it well, because that'll come in time, like, you'll get Jeez, better at that's it. that's so true. You just have to do it, because that's what, People like, underestimate that. Yeah. Just doing. I don't care. You could suck at it, but just doing it Yeah, because, uh, I mean, the process, like, no matter what it is, the process, like, is the process. So, yeah. You, like, you're... When you jump into something, like, you're going to be, like, so I learned how to, uh like, last, this time last year, I learned how to, like, you know, do video editing. Yeah. Some stuff edit, right? For, like, three days, I would, like, look up a video and just be like, yo, I'm going to, like, it's going to suck. like So I'd, like, look up a video, but, like, not really do anything, not really watch it, just close it. Yeah. Then one day I was like, all right, you know, if I get, like, I'm just going to, just going to do it. Yeah. Sat down, watched the video. From there, like, it just took off. Like, I just learned how to, like, do a bunch of stuff, learn how to, you know, really learn how to really, like, you know, immerse myself in the process of, all right, even though it's not going to go well at first, you just have to kind of, you know, override, overlook that, you know, push through it, and then, you know, the grass gets greener. Right. Yeah, that's so true. Jeez. Um, so, speaking of doing it, I mean, you're doing all your stuff with your your combine, and you have a big transition in life right now where, I mean, go, I mean, you've been in college for six years now, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so, this is, yeah. this is a big, uh, I mean, you know, with the your future in the NFL and no matter which way that goes and whatever ends up happening with that, it's like, this is a big trans transition. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you like most excited for? Or what are you looking forward to most? Uh, I'm just looking forward to where the journey takes me. Cause I mean, when I started, you know, and I was young, I never thought I'd end up in like Utah. I never thought I'd be yeah. playing football out here. So <laughs> I bet not, you know, I just, I've learned that, you know, things might go well, things might go poorly, but at the end of the day, like the lessons you learn from that, that's kind of, what's really important. That's what will help you in the long run more than, you know, any short term success or failure. So, you know, I've never been one to sell myself short. So I put, you know, I put my all into getting to this point, put my all into, right. you know, reaching the next step. But I just look at it like, okay, you know, I can look back on it and say, even if things don't go the way I want them to, I can look back and say like, okay, you know, I did everything in my power. I put it like, you know, my best foot forward. I don't have to like live with regret about anything. Mm-hmm. So, that's what gives me confidence of, okay, you know, I think things are going to work out. I think, you know, knowing who I am, knowing what I've been through, I think that no matter what situation I'm in, I can, you know, push through it, fight through it, and, you know, overcome whatever adversity comes. So it's really just, you know, being excited about where I could end up being, uh, you know, I kind of I kind of like the uncertainty of, like, things. Like, I like when life's a little uncertain because I feel like that's when, you know, you learn learn about yourself. So yeah, kind of kind of looking forward to it all. That's a cool way to look at it. And I I bet if if things would have gone according to your plan or the way you thought they were going to go, like, think about how much different a, a, a place in life you'd be at right yeah, now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if I had, um, you know, like, when I – there was a certain point in high school when it was like, all right, you know, a lot of my offers are going to be, like, FCF offers at receiver. Mm-hmm. So, like, I look back on it and say, if I, like, you know, got a scholarship offer after my senior year – for a receiver, played, you know, there for four years. Who knows, like, I probably, like, I definitely wouldn't be in this position right now. Right. Like, who knows what part of my journey led me to, you know, even creating content on, right. like, social media. So, I mean, I wouldn't say, like, I definitely wouldn't say I took the easiest road. I probably took one of the most long-winded roads <laughs> to, take, to get here. But um, I definitely think, like, who it turned me into, like, I enjoy that. So, you know, the like the journey, it is the journey is the journey. Yeah. You know, you can't really do much to change it sometimes. Like or you can do a lot to change it, but sometimes it's just worth like, you know, sticking it out and, mm-hmm. you know, just having that confidence in yourself that, you know, I can whatever situation I'm in, I can make it better rather than just saying, Oh, the situation's hard, I'm gonna like just quit on it. Yeah. And I think that, you know, puts you once you get to the end of it, it's like, you know, it was it was rewarding. Yeah. That's super cool. Um, question I ask everybody, 
towards the end of my podcast is what's something about you that most people don't know? Um, I would say there are, there are a couple things, but I think one of the biggest ones is that I'm kind of like really nerdy about understanding like TV shows, movies and stuff like that. Like you like to get into the deep. Yeah. Like, like the deep, deep what's dive. behind what. Yeah. Like, ga- like game of Thrones. Like I know all about like the history of Westeros and all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> wow, that's like funny. the last of us. Every time, like after every episode, I probably watch like four or five like episode breakdowns, like Easter egg type videos. Like really? what did, like what did this scene mean? What did that scene mean? Uh, you know, actor interviews, director interviews, that kind of stuff. Like I'm just super I don't know, it's just like I like really having in the knowledge of what I'm like watching, what I'm consuming. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's a big t- like that's a big part of what I do on YouTube. You know, just looking up, like, you know, breakdowns of stuff, behind the scenes. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, like, things of that nature. That's funny. I didn't know that. I would have never thought of that either. Um, do you have a favorite show that you've ever watched or movie? Yeah, so, well, favorite movie, uh, Inception. Okay, that yeah. one. Remind me which one that one is. Is that the one where they go to the moon? Or not the moon, but. No, no, no. So, Inception's uh, with Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Josh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And it's the one where, like, they go to, like, dreams within a dream within a dream. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Oh, you gotta, oh I know you, which one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, you got to see it. 10 out of 10 movie. Really? Which, I, also, I think that term gets thrown around way too much. Like, what, 10, 10, out of 10? 10, 10 out of 10 anything. Like, <laughs> like, 10 out of 10 is perfection. Right. And, you know, people will say, like, oh, it was 10 out of 10. And then, you know, I'll be like, eh, I thought it was, like, a 8. Which, yeah. like, you know, it, say you got an 80 out of, like, an 8 out of 10 or something. It's like, it's oh, good. That's, that's good. Yeah. They're like, oh, bro, you're being a hater. Like, you're hating on this. It's like, bro, think about what you said. Like, think about the best movie you ever saw. Yeah. That's a 10 out of 10, right? Was this movie as good as that? No. So then how is it a 10 out of 10? Right. You know? A 10 out of 10 is it couldn't have gotten better. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. So and what about what about show? TV show? Um, I would say Game of Thrones pre-season 8. Yeah? Yeah. Went season, downhill? Uh, see, <sighs> You, wait, did you watch it? Uh-uh. Oh, yeah. Went downhill. <laughs> went downhill. Uh, it went down. It was like, think of it as like the Falcons Super Bowl. Versus yeah. The Super Bowl. Like, it just, the first, like, it was 28-3 at the very end of it. It's like, oh, no way they messed this up. And then royally messed it up. Oh, that's not good. Uh, that's funny, though. I like Breaking Bad a lot. And I like The Wire. Those, yeah. Those are my three. I haven't seen any of those. I'm not a big TV watcher, though. I'm I turn really, on the TV to fall asleep. That's it. I'm really not either. Like, it's really hard for me to start shows. Yeah. Uh, I'm, like, especially because I'm on my phone, like, a lot when I do stuff. Me too. Yeah, yeah. so, like, I like, there's some shows where I know if I start trying to watch it, like, I'm going to miss everything because, like, you know, I'll be scrolling through Twitter or whatever. Right. But um, those three, I'm actually watch, re-watching The Wire right now, but uh, those three are, like, all right, yeah, those, those, I'll probably end up watching, like, you know, multiple times. They got you sucked down. Yeah. Uh, the most recent show to do that to me was Narcos. I don't know if you saw that. I haven't seen it. That it's kind of dope, but <laughs> the thing is, it really appeals to me, like, the the amount of money they were bringing in and mm-hmm. the way they were operating as a business, just because I'm a very business-minded yeah. person. It's like that, like, dude, it was crazy. Yeah, see, the problem with me is, like, since I'm on my phone so much, yeah, like, I can't, I wouldn't be able to pay attention to the subtitles, and then I, re- oh, absolutely, true, yeah. I absolutely refuse to watch a, a show that's dubbed. Yeah, I don't, dude, I do too. I don't know how I got it. I didn't know. Actually, I didn't know it was Spanish when I started it. Really? Yeah, and they start off in English at the beginning. So mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, cool. And the next thing I know, I'm reading the subtitles, and I'm like two two episodes deep, and I'm like, I just read the whole thing. And I'm like, why am I doing this? But they yeah, already no, had like, me hooked. Like Squid Games, like I watched, oh. I, Squid Games, I watched it in, uh, what was it, Korean? Yeah. Yeah, so I watched it in Korean with like English subtitles. Oh. But I remember someone told me, they were like, oh, you got to watch it, like just watch it in English. Or no, what show? It was Money Heist. Money yeah. Heist, they were, someone was like, yeah, you got to watch it. And uh, I was like, how do you guys watch a show like in Spanish? Like, do you pay, pay attention to the subtitles? They were like, no, I just watch it in English. That's so awful. I started watching it. The lips aren't synced up. I can't the, stand the that. The actors don't sound the way they like they should. So yeah. I'm like, yeah, nah. They like, give them some goofy voice. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I can't. I can can never do it. Like, I look at people differently. Who, That's funny. I should like that. <laughs> look at them differently. Well, uh, dude, it's been super fun. I was really excited to get you on here. Um, it was really cool to hear about the business side of things as well as the football side of things. And um, I knew you were a deep thinker, but I didn't realize how much. So that was really cool. Um, wishing you the best of luck at Pro Day. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, I wish you, like, some luck. I kind of hate BYU. 
Yeah. Hey. I, I, I wish you like personal luck. <laughs> well, I appreciate I don't know if that. I wish you, uh, wish you team luck. Hey, we'll we'll take that. We'll hope, take that. Good hope, you, hope you're an all American on a winless team. There you go. <laughs> well, we'll take it. But it's been a blast. Appreciate you, my man. Yeah, of course.